Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I had a very strange thing happen this morning and uh, I think it's very prophetic. It was like a Paul Begley moment of when his the cross fell off the wall behind him. Well, something like that happened to me this morning. I believe it was very prophetic. Now, what do you hear what it was? Very strange. Um, several things came to my mind after it happened and, and uh, I started having strange dreams and then visions because I, while I was asleep I was having dreams and then when I woke up I started having visions. But this was a very strange thing that happened. About 4.15 or 4.20 this morning, I don't should, not sure exactly what time it was, but it was early this morning, about 4, after, after 4 o'clock, 4.15, 4.20ish, around that time. Uh, I was sitting in my chair, just over to my right, and uh, all of a sudden I heard a boom, a, a booming sound. And it sounded like it came right from behind me, not right behind, directly behind me, but off the wall. I don't know if you can see, you can see these two objects that are hanging on the wall here. One's a picture of um, a cross stitch I did, it says welcome. And it's, it's about that big, it's a welcome. Uh, cross stitch and right underneath it is an ornate uh, small ornate uh, metal mirror all right beside it was a picture <laughs> of an angel and it was one of the first angel pictures I cross stitched many years ago back in my mid 20s early mid 20s I think when I started I started cross stitching in my early 20s but well my mid 20s I started getting into some more um, intricate patterns and so the one of the first intricate patterns I did was this picture of an angel carrying a harp. Anyway, uh, this morning <laughs> it was sitting on that wall, right? But this was like those two other objects. But around 4.15 this morning, I heard a boom, like someone had pounded on the wall. And it was not just a like that. It was a, it was a big bam. I live in a basement suite. There's no way anybody could be behind that wall, pounding on it. This is all underground. <laughs> so the sound of someone pounding on the wall behind that picture is highly unlikely. But that's what I heard. Next thing I know, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm fully awake at this moment because I was sleeping in my chair at that, you know, at that moment. But when I woke up, I heard this sound. Next thing I know, the picture falls off the two nails that were holding it up, two nails, several inches apart, at least a, maybe a foot apart, holding up this picture. It, the picture seemed to jump off the wall. Period. People, it seemed to jump off the wall. I couldn't see it, but I could hear this, rat, this noise going on behind me. First the boom, the picture seemed to, move and then it fell I have a, a little electrical piano underneath those um, two those three so three items and only the thing that moved was the picture of the angel the picture of the welcome sign still sitting up there didn't move it the metal frame metal mirror is still sitting underneath it but the only thing that jumped off the wall was the picture of the angel held up by two nails a foot apart. Here's the picture. <clears throat> a woman with two wings. She's playing a harp. She's a praise angel. Now, when it fell off the wall and hit the little electric piano that was underneath it, it then fell forward and fell on the ground and the whole the, there was glass in the mirror and then in the picture and it all shattered to pieces a bucket full of shattered glass there it is <laughs> when I checked the nails there was no reason for the picture to fall off the frame was sound, as you can see. The frame is still sound. And 
not the frame didn't fall to pieces. The, the, the nails in the wall were sound. They're still sitting in there very firmly. When I put the picture back on the wall without the glass, the picture was sitting in there on the wall very firmly. There was absolutely no reason for this picture to fall off the wall and the glass in it to shatter to pieces. <laughs> I, I When it happened, I thought, isn't that the strangest thing? It, it was totally startling. I got up, of course, cleaned up the glass, got rid of it, put it in the bucket, sat down and back in my chair, and I began to think about how strange that was. How very odd that a picture of an angel should fall from the from the wall for no apparent reason after a very strange sound and glass shatter all over my floor in the middle of, well, in early morning. Very odd. Then when I sat there, I mean, I could have just said, okay, that, that was just a strange coincidence, and I was tempted to do so until I started having some very strange dreams. As I was sitting in my chair and I was pondering it, I fell asleep. I began to have uh, very strange dreams. The first one I had was a reoccurring dream, a dream that I haven't been telling you about, but because I didn't think it was highly unusual, uh, being an ex-entertainer, being a person who was used to being on stage. I mean, I worked several years, a few years in, in the entertainment business as a singer and dancer. I know it's hard to believe in my size that I was actually a dancer, but yes, I was. I was sang and I danced on stage in front of thousands of people for a few years. So, and then I sang amateur in amateur choir after the fact when I decided I need, needed to get away from that business and I started to go into amateur choir and I sang in front of hundreds of people with that. So it wasn't unusual to think about singing on stage in a reoccurring dream that have a reoccurring dream about being on stage and singing. Well, this reoccurring dream that I've been having has been about, uh, I've had, I don't know how many times I've had this dream, many times now, at least a couple dozen times over the years where I've been on stage, or at least trying to get on stage, um, trying to find my cue, trying to talk to the stage manager to find out what my directions were because I couldn't remember where I was supposed to be on stage and uh, what my timing was or when my cues were. I couldn't remember. And that was a very strange recurring dream I kept having that I kept, couldn't remember my cues for being on stage. And um, so that wasn't unusual. I didn't think of it as unusual. Like I said, being a person who came from theater and and has worked or even amateurly on stage for, you know, all these years. It wasn't an unusual thing. But last night's dream was a little strange because this time I was on stage and again I was thinking I need to find my cues to get on stage. And the curtain came in, the red curtain closed on me. Yeah, the show was over. There was nobody. The audience had gone. There was nobody in the audience. There was no stage crew. There was no scenery. The curtain closed on me. While well, I'm in this dream, the curtain closed. I go to my dressing room. The lights are out. There's nobody in the theater. It was very eerie and very a little spooky. Everything had closed down. And then I began to have a strange series of disaster dreams. Now, maybe it could be because I had too many, uh, watching too many disaster movies lately, maybe that was it, but I don't think so because this continued after I was awake. I started having disaster movies about earthquakes. One particular one that was very detailed. I was in a, a, a building and people were waiting for the elevator. They got in the elevator and the elevator started to collapse. People jumped out of the elevator when they were and they could, and then the building started to collapse. Um, it was like I was participating in one disaster after another. Um, there was one scene where uh, I'm just trying to remember all, uh, the the order of events. So after the theater thing and the the the, the curtain closes, the show's over. I then had this series of disaster dreams about earthquakes. Um, 
I woke up after that because it was so intense. My stomach started to clench. Um, I had, I started seeing, I was awake and I started having visions of disasters. I saw an Asian country where people were running. Um, I don't know which country it was, but it was Asian. There was another, um, scene where I saw a, a, a nightscape of a, a modern city and it was burning. The whole city was burning. Uh, I saw, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, I heard the word Los Angeles and I, I saw the city of Los Angeles, at least from a distance. Like I was up in the sky and I could see the city of Los Angeles. I didn't see any disaster, but I did see some writing go across like, like a movie screen, but really, really fast, like a ticker tape. And, but they were in the letters were in blue and they were going across so fast. I couldn't read them. Um, I saw, um, Oh dear. I just kept seeing one kind of disaster after another kind of disaster. And, and I, I, like I said, after I was awake, I was started, I was still seeing things that were going on. So I started, when I fully woke up and I really stopped to think about it, I started thinking, what, what was this all about? Why did that picture, the picture of the angel fall off the wall and shatter the glass. And then I started thinking about the New World Order. I began to think about government again. I started thinking about end times. All these things started flooding in. Now, a couple of things came to mind. Uh, let me see if I can turn it and articulate it because this is not going to be an easy explanation. When Hillary Clinton, uh, well, let's go back, let's go back. Let's go back to the synagogue of Satan. You find the synagogue of Satan in the book of Revelation. Uh, a couple of times mentioned in uh, Revelations 2 and 3 with the churches. You see the persecute, persecuted church that's um, persecuted by the synagogue of Satan and the martyr, that's the martyred church. And basically the synagogue of Satan is the counterfeit of the, or the synagogue or the household of Satan is a counterfeit of the household of God. If God the Father, who is the Father of truth and law and righteousness, you have the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of grace, who gives birth to sons and daughters of God, who is uh, merciful, loving, and kind, um, who loves to give us gifts. Her name is Jerusalem. You see you see that in Galatians 4, by the way. You can read that in Galatians 4. There's other places, too. <clears throat> I won't go there. You have the Son of God, who is the only born Son of God, of the Father and the Holy Spirit, who um, dies for us, who loves us, who who's building a kingdom for his bride. You see the bride of Christ. You see her in, uh, Philadelphia. she's the Church of Philadelphia. She's the bride of Christ. Uh, this is this is the household of God. Then you have the household of Satan. Oh, you have the Antichrist too. Oh, no, no, excuse me, the Christ. Then you have the Antichrist. So they have the household of Satan, the synagogue of Satan. You have the father of liars. He is the opposite of the God of truth. He is lawless. He is hateful. Um, he is selfish. Everything opposite to God, that's what Satan is. He is the father of lies. You have the mother of harlots, mother of abominations, is Babylon. She's named after a city. Babylon has a name, a city named after her, just like Jerusalem is the name of the Holy Spirit, and she has a city named after her. The Bride of Christ is also named after the Holy Spirit. You have, you have the mother of harlots, Babylon, mystery, Babylon. Just like the Holy Spirit's a mystery, Babylon is also a mystery. I see, like I said, Satan counterfeits God. Every point, he counterfeits. He's a counterfeiter. Then you have the Antichrist. You have Christ, who is the Son of God. Then you have the Antichrist, who is the Son of Satan. He will be endued with the power of Satan and the whore of Babylon when he rises to power. But he has to have a bride. Her name is Jezebel. 
She is a witch. She is the most empowered witch. She represents government. Just like the Bride of Christ represents the government of Christ, the Bride of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ, will represent the government of Christ. The Bride is in the temple. The rest of the church is the government, will represent the full government of Christ. You have Jezebel, who has to represent the government of of the Antichrist and Satan. The Antichrist, who is the lawless one, who is a liar just like his father, who uh, wants to control the world through every abominable thing, you have to have a bride. And her name is Jezebel. She is the most empowered witch. She, ha she has to give rise to power, just like the bride of Christ is rising to power. And you have this, you have the synagogue of Satan, you have the bride of the Antichrist, who was also rising to power. Now, I was thinking about why are they trying so hard to get a woman in power? Why was Hillary, why was Hillary chosen to be the president of the United States by the New World Order? Because they have, so you see, Satan is a counterfeiter, and he has to desperately put a woman in to represent the bride of the Antichrist. She is representing the government of the Antichrist because Satan is a counterfeiter. And he was desperate to do it before Christ established his government through his bride and his church. You see, Satan is trying very desperately to outmaneuver outrace, be the first to bring down Christ's government. But he can't do it. We already know from the book of Revelation, we know the end from the beginning, God tells us what's going to happen. Satan cannot defeat Christ. As hard as he's trying, he's desperately trying to put his new world order in before Christ can establish his bride in the heavenly places. That means he wins. If he's able to do that. I hope you're following what I'm what I'm trying to say here. See, Hillary's falling to pieces. The New World Order is falling to pieces. It's, it's imploding. Satan's trying to make it rise, but it's imploding, people. That's because in the book of Reve Revelation, the bride defeats the synagogue of Satan. You read it right here. Church of Philadelphia, Revelation chapter 3. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. See, the synagogue of Satan are liars. Behold, I will make them come and worship, at your, worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So, the bride of Christ, which is the church of Philadelphia, the whole government of Christ is the whole church. Ephesus, Myrna, Sardis, um, Pergamus, um, Laodicea, and Thyatira. They're all part, and also the Philadelphia. They're all part of Christ's government. But only one church goes into the temple, and that is the, the Church of Philadelphia. Those are baptized in water, immersion, in immersion water, baptized, baptized, baptized believers. I have already proven that. Go back to my previous videos. I have proven that the Church of Philadelphia are baptized in water, immersion believers. They are the ones that go into the temple. They are the bride. They are the ones that are removed for the hour of temptation. They are the raptured church. But the whole church represents the government of Christ. They will all be implemented in the government of Jesus Christ. Okay, the whole church. The church of Philadelphia is the one that defeats the synagogue of Satan, makes it implode on itself. They will be so imploded, they will come and worship at the feet of this church. Christ says he will make them do it. 
It's not something they willingly will do. It's something that he will make them do. Let's read it. Behold, I will make them. It is a word of force. Them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them. He says it a second time. I will make them come and worship before thy feet. It is an act of force. The bride of Christ brings down the synagogue of Satan. So Satan's anxiously trying to establish his synagogue before his household, his kingdom, before Christ can establish his. But Christ defeats him in the end. Christ does it first. So you have Hillary Clinton. Let's get back to Hillary Clinton. The most possessed, demon-possessed, witchiest woman on the planet. Satan was getting ready to crown her. To make her the bride, the government of the world. She was going to ride as a queen before the bride of Christ could be established. She was trying to break the glass, shatter the glass ceiling. Shatter the glass ceiling. That's what she, that was part of her slogan. We're getting ready to shatter the glass ceiling. What happens? My angel falls off the wall, my angel of praise, the first one I ever did, This, she's a female angel with wings, falls off the wall and shatters the glass. Then I start having dreams about disasters. <laughs> this cannot be a coincidence, people. This is not a, this is not about the new world order shattering the glass. Now, I want you to try and understand something. This is really amazing to me because I've been well, I had those two dreams about cleaning the temple. One about Jerusalem, helping uh, the Holy Spirit clean, cleanse the temple in Jerusalem, or to to fix up. You go back to my other couple of dreams ago about Jerusalem. I think I named it uh, Saint George, the Dragon Slayer. Or, uh, I think, yeah, I think I called it St. George the Dragon Slayer. Then the next one I had was about me being on, in the kitchen, cleaning the kitchen and almost being finished. Cleaning the temple. The kitchen represents the temple. Go back to those videos. And then I had this dream about shattering glass. I mean, I mean, the reality of glass shattering in my house. For no apparent reason. Glass shattering. You have Hillary Clinton saying they're getting ready to shatter the glass ceiling. But she didn't do it. She couldn't do it. God wouldn't allow her to do it. Who shatters the glass? It's the bride of Christ. I want you to see this. I will open doors. It says here in Church of Revelation. Uh, verse 7. Um. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, period. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, uh, and thou hast not denied my name. I believe this glass ceiling has been broken, people but not by the synagogue of Satan. The glass ceiling has been broken by the bride of Christ. She has finally cleansed the temple and the glass ceiling is broken. Wow! <laughs> this is so amazing stuff. I mean, when I sat there, I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, what could it mean? And all of a sudden, all this stuff flooded into my head. And I suddenly realized, I'm going to say something that's probably going to offend some people out there, but that's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> um, occult means hidden. Satan is trying real hard to hide stuff from us. There's a tarot card. Please don't be offended by this, but that's part of the occult. The occult, they hide things in, in the open. But in, if you read and study some of the, occult, the tarot cards, which I've done to a small degree, not a huge degree, but there's some hidden things in their tarot cards that they don't want you to see. Uh, at least not to really truly realize. There's a card in the tarot card thing 
of a woman breaking through a glass dome. She's peeking through a glass dome. She's broken through a glass dome. You see, Satan has been trying to set up his Jezebel, his, his bride of, of Lucifer, his bride of, of, of the Antichrist, to be the first to break through the glass dome. But Christ has already said here that it's the church of Philadelphia who goes through that dome, who opens doors that Satan cannot shut. It is water baptism that seals you from being numbered among, uh, in the end, when Satan tries to number everyone with a number, just like he tried to do in, in um, Nazi Germany. He's going to try and do it again with the mark of the beast. But this group, the Church of Philadelphia, cannot be numbered because they are already sealed with the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which Jesus Christ told you to do. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There was a reason for it. Because when you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you cannot be marked. You cannot be numbered. You cannot number. And you will see that group, same group, in Revelation chapter 8, 7, and 8. Chapter 7, I think. Chapter 7. Where you see a group of people who cannot be numbered. That is the raptured church. I hope you're following what I'm saying. So in this tarot card, you see a woman peeking through a dome. She's looking through a glass ceiling. And Satan was hoping it would be the Jezebel who would do it first. She would represent the government and she would defeat Christ in getting into the position of government before the government of Christ could be established. But oh, wrong. He was wrong again and again oh, and again and again and again and again. Satan can't get it right because he cannot win. Who gets established first? The Church of Jesus Christ. The Church of Philadelphia breaks through the glass dome. Christ opens a door that no man can shut. It makes her rapture ready, people. She is the government. She gets to the temple before the synagogue of Satan can establish his Jezebel in government. I hope this makes sense to you. There was a reason that picture fell off the wall and the glass shattered. I'm telling you people, there was no, absolutely no reason for that picture to fall off the wall. No reason. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried with tra a travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. There appeared another great wonder, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars from heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. She's caught up. Now, I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you here. This, this was particularly significant. This picture falling off the wall, the picture of the angel, the woman with the wings, falling off the wall and shattering the glass was not a coincidence. There's no way this picture could have fallen off by itself. No way. A Paul Begley moment. Cross falling off the wall. This was there is no possible way. Now, you could see those two other pictures behind me? They didn't move. But this picture, there was a boom, it jumped, the picture jumped, and then fell and shattered. And this, and I started having disaster, disaster uh, dreams. I had that, the dream about the curtain closing. The show is over. This is huge, people. This is huge. Huge. I can't believe it. This is amazing. Look, I'm turning red. I'm so, so hot. This is amazing. Something big is getting ready to happen. I don't know what. 
I don't know when the rapture is. I don't know. The Lord hasn't told me. But this was a major sign. Everyone's talking about the sign of the woman this year being huge. Like something that's never happened before. Something about Jupiter doing something that's never done before. There was the sign of the woman of chapter uh, chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12. They were talking about it being huge in September or, or Pentecost or something going on. This was a sign. This was a, This is the woman here, people, with the wings. This is amazing. And the glass shattering. And Hillary talking about the glass ceiling. I tell you, there. the Lord keeps confirming things to me in the most bizarre sort of ways. I tell you, just like when I was having, I was doing that series on the doves. The black dove and the white dove and the Holy Spirit being the white dove and the Church of Jesus Christ being the black dove. <clears throat> then what should I behold that? Week after I finish that series, I see a black dove on the roof of St. Paul's Hospital. And the very next day, I see a white dove while walking my do dog. And I'm telling you, that was extremely, extremely unusual. I've never seen a black dove before. And I certainly have never seen a white dove in in, in in the wild where I live. They don't exist. We have BC doves that are kind of a uh, brownish color, but not white doves suddenly just being in a park where there are no pigeons. <laughs> you barely see a bird. It was very strange. I mean, the Lord just keeps confirming things to me in the most bizarre sort of ways. And this picture falling off the wall, last night, early early this morning, was a sign and when I thought and started thinking about it I started realizing what the Lord was saying the the bride of Christ has broken through the glass dome it's about government people we will be part of the government the church the bride of Christ has to be in the temple she has to be temple ready she has to be without spot or wrinkle this is huge this is huge oh my goodness anyway I think I better close. I, there was something else I wanted to tell you about, uh, uh, but I, I'll have to, I'll have to leave it for the next video because this is already half an hour and I think I could probably go on for another hour. But anyway, <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. Honestly, we have broken the glass ceiling, people, the church, the bride of Christ has broken through the glass ceiling. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, this is exciting.